Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the text box control in Windows Form applications. The text box is a useful control for both allowing the user to enter in value data or outputting data. So the user, the text box gives a interface where the user can type any characters they want to type. Common properties of the, of the text box are as follows. The text property contains string values and whichever, whatever string value is stored in the text property, that is the text that is displayed in the text box. Now this text can either be changed via the application or entered by the user. So when the user is typing in uh, characters into the text box, they are in real time modifying the text property value. The enabled property is a Boolean property. Uh, if the enabled property is false, then the text box is considered disabled. It is viewable, but the user can no longer enter values into it. Uh, the visible property is a Boolean property. Uh, if, if the visible property is set to false, then you can't see the text box anymore. The read-only property is also Boolean. The read-only property, if the read-only property is set to true, then what you are doing is you are declaring that text box to be an output text box. So the user will see it, but can no longer click on it and enter values. You can only use it to output uh, values from the application. And then the back color and four color properties allow the user to kind of change the color formatting. Some helpful methods that are associated with the text box are as follows. There are the show and hide methods, which change the visible property to true or false. The clear method, uh, when you call the clear method from a text box, it, it basically sets the text property to an empty string. So it, it, it clears out any characters that are stored in the text property. The append text method takes a string as an input argument. The append text will take the string value that's passed into it and append it to whatever text is currently in the text property. So that it can be used to add additional characters to the text property of the text box. And the focus method uh, will, if you call the focus method from the text box, um, the form focus is set to that text box. What that means is the cursor is kind of becomes active in that text box. Now as for events, the default event that is registered with a text box is the text changed event, not the click event as in the other controls we've seen so far. What happens is the text changed event occurs or is triggered every time the text box text property is modified, whether, whether it's by the user or the application. So if you if the application changes or sets a text value into the text property and the text changed event is registered, uh, as you change the text property, this event will occur. And if the user is typing in characters, every new character that the, the user enters, or if the user entered some characters and then hit the backspace and deleted some characters, every single instance of the text property changing will trigger this event. Let's see some examples. So here I have a form. Let's go into the common controls of my toolbox and find the text box control and we'll just grab a couple uh, text boxes here. We'll play around with them a little bit. So what I'm going to do is as follows. I'm going to take my first text box, text box one, and I'm going to find the enabled property and set it to false. So my first text box will be disabled. My second text box, uh, I'm going to leave it as is. My third text box, I'm going to change to be read only. So I'll set the read only from false to true. All right, and let's run this application and see what some of those um, changes, how they look on the form. All right, so we can see here that the first text box that I put the enabled property to false, it's kind of grayed out. I can, the user can't even select it. It's kind of hidden. It shows the text box, but it, you can no longer interact with it. The second text box is left alone, so I can enter in values and delete values. The user has interaction with it. This 
third checkbox I changed to read only. And when I clicked on it, I see the blinking cursor, but if I try to type, I can't type into it. Okay, so that's the difference between enabled, read only, and kind of in normal mode. Now let's make, an, let's register an event here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to register the text changed event on my text box 2. And what's going to happen is I want this, to, uh, what I want to happen is every time the user types a character into this text box, I want to copy the, the result of this text box 2 into text box 3. So I'm going to take the text property value from text box 2 and transfer it to the text property of text box 3. Okay, so I could select my control, go over to properties, uh, I'm sorry, click on the, the events tab here, find the text changed event, and type in a method name. Or I could double click on the text box. Because I know the text changed event is the default event handler, and so what happens is I've registered a text box to text changed event, and behind the scenes I have a method to handle that, that event. So whenever the text box 2's text changes, this method should trigger. So what I'm going to do is every time this method is called, I'm going to set text box 3's text property equal to text box 2's text property. Okay. Now text box 3 is read only, but I should be able to write data data to this. I'm sorry, it's not read only anymore. No, it is it is write only. Read only is set to false. I'm sorry. All right, let's run this and test it out. Okay, so I have I have triggered I have registered an event that every time I t I change the text value of text box two something occurs and what occurs is I'm copying that text into text box three and so as I type in real time we see every time a character is pressed in my text box. That event is triggering and copying my text box 2's value into text box 3. This occurs when I delete it. Okay. And we could say we could show that even it, the text box event isn't triggered only when the user enters in a value. Let's say we go into our form 1 constructor and I'm going to set text box 2's text property to be called to the the text string default. Now because I'm changing the text property of text box 2, it should trigger the text changed event from text box 2 and copy that default string into text box 3. Let's test it out. And we did. So even though even when I changed the value in the application, the event was triggered and the text was copied over. So as I delete it, they're tied together. So this is just a brief introduction of the text box control.